Hi, this is Andre. This video is going to be showing a method for manual sample slicing in Bitwig's The Grid. And I'm going to be uploading this patch to the Bitwiggers forum uh, in the next couple of days when I, um, when I get it all finished up. And so this is basically a workaround because we don't have slicing built into Bitwig's sampler. But um, I've been working on this the last couple of days and it seems to be working. It's you know not as convenient as a normal sample slicing mode, but it works. So here's a demonstration of it with an, an amen break. And um, so you can see I'm just doing a bunch of tweaking of the uh, of the sample parameters on here um, while it's being sliced. Anyway, okay, you get the point. So this one is a little bit of a more complex version of it. So I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna up, I'm gonna open up the more simplified one. So, cause yeah, the uh, this one is has a bunch of additional stuff for tweaking it. But this is basically just the straightforward uh, sample slicer. And this is, um, I'm kind of working on preparing this one to put it on on the Bitwiggers forum. So you can see. Uh, maybe I should put a MIDI clip or whatever. You can see if I press these notes, it's it's uh, triggering the samples. And I've I've done videos on uh, sample slicing this way, but uh, to a division of the tempo, but um, or to a division of the sample size. But uh, I definitely prefer manual slicing because I think it's more accurate. And that's just how I like to do things. And so it's been kind of frustrating that we can't do that in Bitwig. I mean, you can right click a sample and slice by the onsets, but it's just not the same as actually being able to dial in the uh, slice points in the sampler. So, you know, I end up sometimes going to other DAWs just to do that. Like I've been slicing up stuff in Renoise and then putting it in Bitwig. And anyway, so I kind of just came up with this as a workaround. So it's, it's a little clunky, but it, it works. So basically you can see, so it'll allow you to have up to 32 sample slices. And then the way you dial them in is, uh, just with these knobs and, um, they're mapped across the keyboard. So, uh, basically with this, you can see, I can move or move this around to get the position I want. And uh, one little thing I have in here is this thing, so I can just have have a have the keyboard running while I dial it in. So I can just have this on. You know, let me turn this down a little bit because that's just going to be really loud. Uh, maybe that's too quiet. Let's just see. So basically, this is slice two, so I can just move this until it hits the right point. And then I can go to slice three. And anyway, it's the same thing. So you can see I can move it around and get, and get that point to be how I want it. And then I can go to slice four and do the same thing. And then if I want to change the uh, length, I can just do the slice afterward. And so anyway, yeah, that that's basically it. Um, I've, I've been experimenting with a few different methods of doing this. Um, so w the one drawback with the way I have this one is that all the samples are sort of linked. So you basically have to go one in one, you have to go in order from the beginning to the end, because if you later on go and like adjust one of the, one of the slice positions from one of the earlier on samples, it's going to shift the whole thing a little bit. Um, I've, I've made a separate version that doesn't do that, but I kind of like the way this one works better because I feel like it's a little bit 
just easier to dial in the uh, the points because basically they're all kind of linked up together. The other method, I, they were all basically independent of each other, but it, for me in terms of just like the workflow of using it, it, se it was just uh, like a little bit less convenient. Um, but yeah, I might put the, put this other version up too. Um, but yeah, that's that's basically that's basically it. And then one thing too, if you hold down any of these, you can. Um, oh, I have loop on right now. It doesn't need to be on. So if I take loop off, it's basically going to be the same same thing because. I had the um, envelope cutting it off so it doesn't play past the loop point. You see, so um, if I turn loop looping back on now, I kind of like it for the visual feedback, so I like it too for um, just dialing in the samples. And then if we turn on sustain full, it'll just loop as I hold it. And then if I turn off this and pl play sustain full, you can. You can do like that. And then um, one of the cool things about if you have looping on over here, and you, could play, you can play with the loop length and get little glitchy re-triggers. Like that. So um, yeah. That's basically what this patch is. Uh, I'm gonna make an account and upload it to Bitwiggers in like a day or two, and I'm planning on um, uploading some of my older grid patches that I made videos about, uh, like over the last couple of years onto onto Bitwiggers as well. Um, I need to clean up some of these patches because I've I've never uploaded anything on there before, and um. I know it's been a while since I've made any videos too. I haven't made any videos in about six months because I've just been working on my own music. But um, yeah, I decided to kind of get back into this a little bit. So I should, I'll probably have some more videos up soon and be putting some patches online and stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, I'll put a link in the description for when I get it up on the uh, Bitwiggers forum for where you can download this patch. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.